everyone, it's Ricky Molina from the Ricky Molina YouTube channel and RickyMolinaProductions.com. I just wanted to share with you a personal experience that I had trying to sell a guitar on eBay. And I've sold quite a few things on eBay over the years, as many of you probably as well. And I just wanted to sort of like share with you this experience because you may not want to consider eBay going forward for selling some valuable items such as a guitar. You know, over the holiday season, I sold a Fender Jag vintage Johnny Marr special. Um, and it's a great sort of like, you know, Strat type of sounding guitar. And it has a whammy bar and everything. And it's just got that sort of like the Chris Isaac kind of sound, almost Nofloresque. And it suits a certain type of music. It's just that I wasn't really playing this guitar that much or as much as I had ended up playing another guitar that I ended up buying. And I had to sell some of my used guitars because as most guitarists tend to suffer from GAS, i.e. guitar acquisition syndrome, you can imagine that over the years you, you just end up acquiring all these guitars and you just need to unload your inventory. So I sold this guitar over eBay to some guy out near LA, you know, just before Christmas and, you know, a couple of days later, I didn't hear back from him. I thought everything was going fine. You know, the guitar was in excellent condition and the guitar sounded great. Um, well, it turns out that I got this like return message request for a full refund, or I could wire him $250 and he would call it even. How nice. Um, well, anyways, he ends up shipping the guitar back and lo and behold, the neck was not in perfect condition because he hadn't packed the guitar properly for the return shipment. It must have been bouncing around in there. It wasn't the same box. It was the same case, but it was not packed properly. So the guitar must have been moving about inside the box and, and it probably not packed well. On top of that, the right lock on the guitar case, and this is a vintage guitar case, so that's going to be a whole journey in itself. So the bottom line is that it was a real pain in the neck. And I contacted eBay and told them that, you know, I can't give this guy a full refund because the guitar came back to me in damaged condition and the lock was also broken on this guitar case. This is like as much as the value of the guitar itself, but so far I haven't seen anything hit my PayPal account. So it's about over a month since this whole saga started. And when you sell something on eBay, you think that the money's going to go into your checking account and everything's going to be fine and dandy so you can go and do something else with that money that you've received and all this. And so the bottom line is that it's, it's just such a hassle. Now eBay was nice enough to say that they're going to reimburse me for the damages. I got this email saying that they're only going to reimburse me for like, you know, $400, which is not at all fair because the damages exceed that. I would argue that the damages were over and above, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars at least, considering that I have to repair the neck and I have to find this vintage lock for this guitar case. So I'm not terribly pleased the way things are as far as this experience uh, with eBay, nor am I, of course, with the, with the buyer. But it does raise this question as to whether it pays to sell a musical instrument such as a guitar on eBay. And I thought I'd share with you some of the key things I've learned over the years to keep in mind so that you can save yourself some frustration, some headaches, money, and, and the time and energy that you invest in listing some of these items on eBay. Now, one of the major common obstacles that you'll find is you're subject to returns. And in particular, with eBay, you may have a dissatisfied buyer who's going to conjure up this incredible story. And the story that this buyer had conjured up was really quite fascinating. And um, you could tell that his story didn't add up very well at all. And of course, a dissatisfied buyer could lead potentially to negative feedback and negative customer reviews, which doesn't bode well for your eBay reputation either. Then there are those who abuse the system. There are scammers who uh, try to seek reimbursement, for example, through insurance, just basically using this as an opportunity to get something for free. And in this case, I was dealing with what I refer to as a use it one timer. The buyer needed this particular guitar for a recording session or a gig or performance of some sort, and then planned to just return it and get a full refund. So like a free rental, if you will. But then on top of all these headaches and frustrations, you have the commissions and the expenses that kick in. And let's go over them briefly. First, you have the eBay commission fee, which is about 10% of the sale price of the item. 
Next, you have the eBay insertion fee or the listing fee, which is something like 0.3% of the sale price of the item. Then you have to pay the PayPal transaction fee, which is about 3% of the sale price of the item. And on top of that, you have shipping costs. Now, in case of a guitar like this, you know, I had shipping costs of about $70 to $75 across the continent. And if it's a really valuable item, you probably want to insure it. And insurance on a guitar like this with an estimated value of about $1,500 to $1,700, you know, you're looking at about $100 to $125 of insurance, uh, which may sound like a lot, but if you have to take this route, I strongly recommend that you buy some form of insurance. And then you have the cost of all the packing supplies, which everything from the cardboard boxes to the wrapping paper, the bubble wrap, uh, the newspaper print paper that you need to stuff the package so that things don't slip around, the markers and the tape, etc., etc. I mean, it can add up. I estimated that, depending on the size of the package, of course, you'll spend anywhere from 3 to $6 in packing supplies. And finally, there's the headaches and the frustrations and the time and energy that you waste uh, going through a process like this. So let's consider the case of a guitar that you sell on eBay, for example or anything for that matter, uh, of value. I decided to go with a price like $1,000 because it's a nice round figure. Okay, so the first expense that you have is the um, commission fee to eBay, which is 10%. So in this case, it would be 100 bucks off of the sale price. Next, you have the 0.3% listing fee with eBay, which is um, $3. Next, you have the PayPal 3.4% transaction fee, which in this case amounts to $34. Then you have shipping costs, which can either be United States Post Office, UPS, FedEx, or DHL, whatever courier you're using. And if you decide to buy insurance for a $1,000 item, um, that'll be almost $100. In this case, let's assume it's $90. Packing supplies, you know, it's going to be about $5. And then there's the time and energy that you invested, not only listing the item, but monitoring the developments for the listing, the time that it takes to, to package the item, and then you have to bring it down to the shipping center. That time and energy could be like $15 an hour. Uh, it takes one full hour, that's $15. Could be even higher than that, uh, depending on how much time you invested in this process. But in this example, the total amount that you're gonna pay in expenses will be about $315 or 31, 32% of the sale price. So just think about that. 31 to 32% of the sale price of the item goes to all these expenses and potentially headaches and frustrations. This is not to say that I haven't had pleasant experiences selling some items on eBay, because I have, but they tend to be different types of items than these. I do not suggest selling things of value over eBay or um, musical instruments in general, okay? Normally, things that you want to sell on eBay are non-bulky items that are tend to be smaller, than let's say a shoe box or headphone box type of size. Things that are not fragile or delicate, where you're worried or paranoid about things breaking along the way, which I've had um, both with mu musical instruments as well as with shipping China, for example. I shipped dinnerware uh, to someone in Louisiana once and it was just a nightmare experience. I had to plead my case with FedEx in that instance, and I ended up getting some reimbursement for my headaches and frustrations, but it's not an experience that I would look forward to going through again. So no porcelain, no delicate china or musical instruments. Generally what you want to do is stick to things that aren't fragile and that are not that valuable. You know, we're talking about things like electronics. Cell phones sell great. Headphones, microphones, um, things that you can pack very well inside of a, sh a shoe size box. Collectibles work pretty well as well. Stamps, coins, DVDs, memorabilia, clothing. But in general, the things that work for selling on eBay would be non-valuable things, things that are easy to ship and aren't that fragile. Things that you can pack well and not feel as though you have to insure. Which raises another question. How would you go about selling a guitar, for example, or something of value? Well, there are some other alternatives to eBay. The first option I recommend is selling through Craigslist. Now, Craigslist is pretty much nationwide in the U.S., 
and it's basically a local free listing service. Now the listing process is similar to eBay. You upload images of your item and you write up a fair description of what is being sold. But the difference is that you're selling locally. So that means in comparison to eBay, for example, your target audience is much smaller because you're dealing with a local audience. Let's face it, the number of guitarists that live within a 50 mile radius of me is much smaller than the number of guitarists that are surfing eBay looking for used guitars. But that's okay. The upside with Craigslist is that there is no shipping other than you're driving to meet the buyer in person at some neutral location. And I highly recommend that you choose a neutral location. I would not suggest inviting a stranger into your house to check out your instruments or things of value. Similarly, I would not impose that on the buyer. Although some buyers suggest it, I don't think it's a good idea. A better idea is to meet the buyer at some neutral location like a Starbucks or a McDonald's or even a guitar center. If you ask the guitar center guy, um, you know, can I just have somebody check out one of these instruments? Especially if you're going to buy a guitar from, from Guitar Center or Sam Ash and you, you're going to say it's contingent on the sale of this particular instrument. I just want to get some good money for it. You know, they don't mind inviting somebody else in to check out an instrument for a potential trade-up. Um, that may work, but you got to talk to the manager about it first. So a neutral ground and one-on-one -on -one meeting with a potential buyer. Now, I understand that some sellers may be uncomfortable meeting strangers even in neutral locations. And, you know, whether you're male or female, that may be an issue as well. But you can bring perhaps a friend along with you to accompany you. And if as long as you stick to a public location, you should be in pretty good shape to conduct a sale. Now, if you're like me, I'm not very good at haggling. I just basically have my rock bottom price in mind. And as long as I can get a deal, I'm pretty much happy. So I'm a little bit of a softy. I'm not a good haggler. So I end up losing maybe 100 or 200 bucks on a deal by meeting somebody one on one. Um, but that's OK. I'll live with it knowing that this person really wanted this instrument and is probably going to make good use of it. Um, so that makes me happy in a way. Another thing that you can consider in terms of selling locally is to sell on consignment through a music store or a consignment store of some sort. And that's where, you know, you agree that the guitar is going to be sold exclusively at that store uh, for a fee of about 15%, which when you consider that it's about 31% or so to sell an item on eBay, 15% isn't so bad. But just make sure that you have a contract signed, that you cover your butt in case that instrument gets damaged at the store, or if it gets stolen for that matter. So just make sure that you have a consignment contract, something in black and white that spells out exactly what it is that you're selling. Take pictures also before you bring it to that consignment store, just so that you have evidence of the value of that item. Of course, another option is to trade in your guitar in order to trade up to uh, some other guitar. But the downside, of course, is that they're going to give you less than half of what it can sell for on eBay. And that's a big hit when you think about it. That's over 50% of an expense fee right there. If none of these other options appeals to you, you can always donate the item to charity. And in return for doing so, you'd be able to deduct the value of the instrument or the item. Oh, I did forget one last option, and that's to keep the guitar. But then again, by doing so, you'll end up suffering from GAS, which is the Guitar Acquisition Syndrome. But that may be okay in some instances, because if you're a serious recording artist, you may want to acquire different guitars that have different types of sounds for specific types of recordings. Well, that's all I have for today. I just wanted to share with you my experience recently selling a guitar on eBay which I do not recommend doing. I think you're much better off trying to sell things of value, specifically guitars in this instance, at the local level. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. This will give me an incentive to make more videos like this where I do more product reviews and also share with you some of my new compositions, music videos, as well as some tips on composing and songwriting. Thanks so much and have a great day.